by the way, we weren't speaking of breaking news. I just wanted to throw a curveball at Sheru uh, putting up the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> she did well, though. I didn't didn't mess with her too much, huh? That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're looking and you're wondering if the housing market is heating up. Uh, if you're wondering that, you live under a rock. <laughs> so uh, the, the main numbers came in because, you know, they're a, a, a few months behind. Um, 14.6% is what the appreciation, uh, a price, price appreciation has gone up. And the national number, right? Si yeah. Yeah. Since last May, 14.6%. <clears throat> that seems pretty, you know, pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. It's not sustainable, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, if you're a seller, and this is great news, if you're a buyer, uh, it, it's not great news. If you're a real estate investor, it makes it tougher. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like I see people, it's coupled with an inventory issue as well. Sure. So like, you know, I had a conversation with, uh, with some guys the other day and they were saying, I can, you know, I can get X amount of money for my house. I'm like, great. Where are you going to go? Well, I don't know. It's like, like, there's an inventory issue. Like that's, that's the, you know, I, I harp on this all the time. That's the problem is we have these giant REITs and hedge funds borrowing at almost next to nothing causing prices to just keep rising because they, they have no cost of capital. They can pay 40, 50, a hundred thousand over asking price. And people, you know, you think, Oh, this is a great deal. I'm going to cash out my equity in my home. And then it's like, well, the buy-in cost now, what you cashed out isn't even enough to cover your 20% uh, down or whatever it may be on your next home. Well, I mean, if you're, <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're in that position where you're downsizing anyway, you're you turned into an empty nester. Now's not a bad time to sell. Um, you know, you're going to pay, be paying a little bit more for that smaller home, mm -hmm. uh, but you're still going to have plenty of money left over. Yeah. Uh, assuming uh, you didn't have it mortgaged to the hilt in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, but but now's not a bad time to rent. While rents have been going up, they haven't been going up nearly as high as the if you can find a place to rent, yeah, you know, that's 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 Depends another on the market that you're in. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're coming to the southeast, like when, when we're talking about this, we're talking locally right now for you know homes and 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 rental properties and and, and just apartments in general. It's tough to find them. Yeah, it's really tough. What was the inventory? What's the days on market or not the days on market, but the days of inventory for we had, Charlotte? Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen uh, days. Last month. I thought it was seventeen. I think it actually went slightly down. Yeah. Um, so finding a place is, yeah. And it's yeah. not your primary mm -hmm. residence, sell it. If you need, if you want some cash and, and you have a place to put it that has, you know, low tax liability, sell it. Yeah. If it's a rental property and you, you always want to take a look at your portfolio, mm -hmm. see which ones have the most equity. Um, it might not be a bad time to get rid of the ones that are the most headaches. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, we always have stinkers in our, portfolio. And, yeah. I mean, if you're uh, doing it, if you're doing it right, I mean, you're, you're always going to have some. Yeah. Um, that said, I was reading in the Mecklenburg times. Uh, if you are in our area and you're a real estate investor, uh, you need to buy the Mecklenburg times. It's a very small investment, but they have uh, a lot of real estate uh, stuff in there. That's uh, mm -hmm. very important. So uh, another case Shuler, uh, report and article had to do with uh, home flipping. It's the lowest uh, profit margin uh, in yep. years and years for, for flippers. And that's, it's obvious because flippers are having to pay more for the home. Yeah. Because they can't. And for the, and for the materials. And, and it costs more <laughs> to, uh, yeah, the, the supplies are a lot higher. Yeah. That said, the average, uh, margin was still over 40% return. So that's okay. That's, <laughs> that's still yeah. not bad. It's, it's not doom and gloom. It's just, yeah. you're going to have to uh, pick and choose. Um, you don't know when this is going to end. It's, and in my opinion, it's not going to, you're not going to see prices come down. The only thing you're ever going to see is the rate of appreciation. Slow. slow. Mm. Homes are still going to go up in value. Uh, we're we're going to have to have a total meltdown of the housing industry. And I, I, 
I don't see that ever happening again. They fixed that problem. Right. I mean, I mean the, the mortgages that they're underwriting right now are the uh, best that I've ever seen. Yeah. The more, most well, stringent. Well, problems usually carry with them several variables. And even though one has been fixed, there are other variables that could be met to create the same problem. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest variable is supply and demand. And we're, it's going to take us a boatload of time to catch up with the uh, supply and demand. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, as long as as long as people don't get priced out of homes, I mean, that's that's the that's the issue. I think that a lot of people are facing is are they are we your first time home buyer? I mean, at this point, even like you know your second or third, um, are they getting priced out of the out of the home? uh, You know, the ability to own a home. Yeah, and every time I hear the ex experts speak. On television, they always talk about the twenty percent down you need. I don't know anybody that ever put twenty percent down. No, there's there's so many <laughs> not ways. Not on their first home. <laughs> well, not on their first home, and I mean honestly, like not really on your on your second. I mean, you can still get a conventional loan with five percent or more down. Yeah, no, yeah. and I get that. Um, you know, perhaps if you're buying an investment property and you or you you sold your property and you're using proceeds to buy the new one, you're putting a lot more down. Mm-hmm. Um, but most people aren't, I mean, they're, they're, you would like to be at 80%. So you're not paying private mortgage insurance. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's not an issue. And affordability is still there. Uh, in in it, market, it, in certain markets. Yeah, it, it is. And I'm talking about monthly payment. Now it's still low because rates are low. Um, prices have to go up considerably in order for you not to make be able to qualify for the mortgage payments typically. Um, Mm -hmm. the down payment would be an issue. Yeah. I get that on the affordability side. Yeah. Uh, But rates are going to have to go up tremendously in order to price people out. Now, what's not helping is the inflation and let's see if it's temporary or not. uh, Transitory, right? Transitory. Yeah. I love fed speak. I know transitory. Well, it was, it's transitory, but right now it's lost in traffic right now. I heard a great (laughs) joke this morning, unless you're, if you're not a financial geek, probably not that funny, but uh, Alan Greenspan, they were so happy nowadays because the Fed is actually speaking in plain language instead of in code like Alan Greenspan used to do. He would talk for an hour and you don't know what he said. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one guy said that he had to propose to his wife three times because first two times she didn't know what he was saying. 